I'm Terry Daly. This is a classic example of a resorptive lesion in the tooth of a cat. We find these all the time and they are very frustrating. They are very painful to the cat. We don't know what causes them. We don't know how to prevent them. And the only treatment is to remove the affected tooth. I call them resorptive lesions. You'll see a lot of different names for them. Some people call them cavities, although technically they're not cavities. Some people call them feline odontoclastic resorptive lesions or feline oral resorptive lesions, also called forals. Sometimes they're called cervical line lesions or neck lesions. They're similar to cavities or caries. They're holes in the teeth. But whereas a cary is due to bacteria eating away at the tooth, resorptive lesions are due to tooth cells cells within the tooth called odontoclasts eating away at the tooth. With caries, with tooth holes due to infection, the treatment is to drill away the infected area and fill in the hole. If we drill resorptive lesions and fill those, those odontoclasts still eat away. And so the only treatment is to extract the tooth. The main problem with resorptive lesions is that they cause a great deal of pain for the cat without it being obvious to people. And for this reason, they are a lot more common than most people realize. And it's because of the way the cats show pain. If I have a toothache, everyone's going to hear about it. My friends are going to hear about it. My staff is going to hear about it. My dentist is going to hear about it. My dogs and cats are going to hear about it. Cats don't do that. If a cat has a broken leg, they'll let you know. If they have an itch, you'll usually find out. But if the mouth is painful, they might show no sign of pain at all or they might show signs that humans don't recognize as pain. They might eat oddly, they might be less playful, they might groom less, they might act like they're getting old. And it's really a toothache. In some cats, these resorptive lesions lead to broken teeth. They can lead to weight loss, they can lead to dehydration, they potentially can be life-threatening. But for the most part, they're painful. Now, as I said, we don't know what causes these. Some are probably due to poor dental hygiene. In other words, brushing your cat's teeth might help prevent some of these. I do see a lot of these in cats who have had anesthesia-free or other types of cosmetic dental cleanings. It might be because of the way that they were cleaned, but I suspect that at least some are because the teeth weren't polished properly after the cleaning. There's some thought that dry food contributes to resorptive lesions. Cat's teeth are little knives. They are for cutting and shredding. They are not adapted to crunching, to cracking hard food. And the trauma of using those little knives to crack hard pieces of food is thought by some to contribute to the development of these resorptive lesions. Another problem with most dry foods is that they have urinary acidifiers in them. The carbohydrates in dry food causes cats' urine to be alkaline, which is problematic for some cats. To overcome this, food manufacturers put urinary acidifiers into the dry cat food. And there is evidence that acidification contributes to these lesions. I don't make any diet recommendations based on these possibilities, but they are worth noting. So. How do we diagnose these? Sometimes it's as simple as looking at the tooth. If you see a big hole in the tooth, or half the tooth is gone, in a cat, that's usually a resorptive lesion. The most common tooth to get these is the third premolar on the lower jaw. This tooth is hidden by the lip, so you have to pull the lip down to see the hole. Sometimes it's subtle. Sometimes all you see is a little redness, or the gingiva might be a little overgrown, and sometimes it's just obvious. These are all photos of resorptive lesions that we found on various teeth just by looking. Most of these cats weren't showing any overt signs of pain. We were doing the exam for other reasons and saw the painful teeth during the exam. Sometimes we find these after cleaning the tartar off the affected tooth. But a lot of resorptive lesions are below the gum line and can't be detected by visual inspection. The only way to diagnose those is to take a radiograph, an x-ray. That's one of the reasons that we always take radiographs when we clean cat's teeth. This is an example. The tooth is on the left and looks normal. 
but the radiograph on the right shows that it is mostly gone. That tooth is ready to snap off. These radiographs on the left are of normal teeth, and these on the right are of teeth with resorptive lesions. You can see how those roots and crowns on the abnormal teeth are disappearing. As I said before, the only treatment for a resorptive lesion is to extract the affected tooth. Now, understandably, a lot of people are reluctant to do this, especially if more than one or two teeth are involved. They're concerned that the, their cat won't do as well without those teeth. But the vast majority of cats who have teeth extracted are acting normal or better than normal within a day or two of the extraction. If those teeth are painful, there's really no question about it. Those cats are better off without those bad teeth. We see a lot of cats here without any teeth, and those cats do great. I hope this explains something about resorptive lesions in cats' teeth. If you have any questions, please give us a call.